We live in a world where data is now king. And often, well, you'll be picking up a data analyst role, even though it wasn't included in your job spec. And that's because while well, your peers, your manager, or even your team members will send you data in Excel. It could be invoice data or project forecast information. And you're expected to make sense of that data, report back, and also make strategic decisions on the team and also the business. And that is obviously going to be impacting those important words that you left on your CV or resume. Proficient in Excel. Yes, how many of us have those words and we hope, well, they're never put to the test right. But fear not, we now have tools like Microsoft Copilot, which can live inside a Microsoft Excel and provide AI assistance when it comes to understanding your data. Yes, we now live in a world where Copilot can summarize and understand your data, identifying key points in there. It can also automatically generate reports and charts so you can share them with your peers and managers. You can even make changes to your data using Copilot to do all the work. But of course, Copilot, well, it's not autopilot. Remembering that AI does make mistakes, but the information that I'm gonna be showing you today should certainly help live up to the words on your CV of being proficient in Excel. Before we dive into these awesome Copilot capabilities in Excel, why not hit on that subscribe button and look at more great content that we have on Copilot and Microsoft 365 to turn you into a productivity superstar with the tools that you already have. And of course, if you like this video, I would love it, hit that like button. And so you can let me know that this video certainly helps you out. Otherwise, let's dive into Excel and find out the new world of Copilot and how it's gonna impact you and change the way that you work with data. Here we are inside of Microsoft Excel. Now, the first point to note that's really important is that Copilot, well, it works with files stored inside of the cloud. And this file is stored in OneDrive for Business. And the version of Copilot I'm using today is Microsoft 365 Copilot, but you can also see similar capabilities in Copilot Pro as well. With this data therefore stored inside of the cloud in OneDrive for Business, well, we can use Copilot to interact with the data. If this data, however, lived on my desktop, well, Copilot would not be able to actually use or manipulate this data. So just ensure that your data is stored inside of the cloud. Now with that done, while well, we here we have some data. This currently is not a table of data. You can see by clicking into it, it effectively is text. And Copilot, well, it cannot work with data in this format. So what I'll do is open on the right hand side, the Copilot button. And the great news is, while well, Copilot will recognize that we're looking at data inside of Excel we actually see we can convert this data range automatically so Copilot can use the data. I don't have to do this myself. So let's go ahead and select convert to convert this data into a table instantly. So our data now converted into a table, I can also explain that this is invoice data. Now it's purely dummy data. Yes, it's not real, but you might have very similar data when you're working on projects, you're doing forecasting or you're running your own business. This information is really handy to understand because it ultimately says about the performance of our project and how much it's gonna cost us and also any other insights. So in terms of the data here, the first thing we're gonna have a look at is how we can get insights from this data. Now in the Copilot sidebar on the right-hand side, we can now begin to ask information to Copilot. I might be interested here on all of our high value invoices Anything above £5,000 would have interest to me. I might be able to understand where most of our project spend is going. So let's go ahead and note to Copilot to highlight all invoices which have above £5,000 as their invoice amount. So let's go ahead and send that into Copilot. And there we go. We now have values highlighted by Copilot. We can see all invoices amounts above £5,000 appear inside of a quick access to them. Now, anything I ask Copilot to do, well, it can be undone because that's useful to know for highlighting, but I won't want it applied to my data permanently. So let's go ahead and undo that change. 
Now, next time I want to understand, well, where all of the spend is on our development resource and our category of development. So again, let's now ask Copilot to do a total sum of the development spend. And in that sense, it will go ahead and work out the overall spend automatically in the right hand side. And there we go. It's now totaled the amount that we've also spent on development. And not only that, it's even created a pivot chart that we could bring straight into our Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to be covering that a little bit more later. But here we want to understand a little bit more. So I'd like to understand what are the most common categories. We have lots of spend information here. Where is most of this spend going? What's the most common categories? Well, let's go and add that into our Copilot chat. And I look through the data to work out where the most common categories are. It found out that the most common category was development. There are 12 invoices relating to development activities. So here we found out that the category that I have most invoices for is software development, which is what I would expect from our project. But I'm also interested about the percentage allocation across all of our categories. Let's go and add that into Copilot and find out in more information around that. And what we can see that Copilot has now responded. It's totaled the count of rows for each category. And then further down, it's also set the percentages. So I'm now aware that 24% of all of our invoices are for development. We're only for quality is 4% and marketing is 10%. So it's very handy to understand the overall percentage when it comes to invoicing. So you can report that back to your peers. Maybe you're also asked, well, which of the supplier are we spending most of our project budget on? Let's go and ask Copilot to calculate that for us with a simple question. And there we have it, GA resourcing of over £142,000 of spend in the overall project. I now know where most of our cost is going and which one is the most key supplier for us and potentially holds the most risk. And finally, for these insights, while I want to understand how our budget is tracking against our total amount, let's go ahead and ask Copilot of our total budget of £200,000, how are we tracking against that amount considering the overall spend? Let's go ahead and find out what Copilot has to say about that. And there we go, Copilot's now identified we're over by £87,000. What's interesting on that question is, well, it needed to work out what the budget was. It had to do that using the human language. I never told it to sum the total and then do a comparison against the total I provided. It's worked it out itself and provided the relevant answer. So you can go further in your insights and ask questions of Copilot on your data. You're not limited to these scenarios. But as we can see, getting insights from your data quickly is possible when we're using Copilot. Before we get Copiloted out, I'd love to tell you a little bit more about what we do and how we can help you. Because here at Your365 Coach, we're dedicated to make your journey in 365, well, the best possible. At our website below, you'll find information on learning courses and journeys to help become even more proficient in using the tools that you have today including SharePoint, Teams, Planner, and more. Not only that, you can also take advantage of downloading a free Microsoft 365 ebook, where you can find out even more about what's possible in 365. So head to the link below to find out more. Otherwise, let's dive back into Excel and Copilot and continue our journey and how we're going to change the way you work with data. And of course, in Excel, we spend a lot of time building reports and charts. So can Copilot help us out? I'm going to ask it to create a new bar chart based upon the total spend for each supplier. Let's go ahead and add this into Copilot and see if we can generate the chart for us without me doing anything. And there we go. Copilot's now generated a chart for us. But it's not very helpful being in the right-hand side sidebar. What we actually do is click on Add to a new sheet, and it will insert this table into Excel. We now have the total sum of all of our different suppliers, as well as our bar chart here showing each of them as a comparison to each other with the total amount shown below in pounds. So Copilot's handily generated us a pivot chart straight from a question. It didn't take very long at all. So now we're back in Copilot, let's ask for more insights into our data because we just don't want one single bar chart for my next meeting. So let's ask it to show data insights. It'll take the full data, from the table and pull back more insights for us. Now it's pulled back some insights on the total spend by category. Well, we already knew that anyway to begin with that development was the highest spend. So what I can also do is add all insights to a grid. Let's go ahead and select that and Copilot in real time will begin to create lots of different pivot charts 
on a separate tab within your Excel spreadsheet. Here we now see the amount by category, the frequencies and so forth, and which supplier has the most spend, and we can even find more insights from our data. Now, of course, you can change any of these. These aren't pictures. If I click into this one here as an example, you can see all of the fields. You could change that to meet your requirements. So Copilot's done the hard work of pulling together and you can make amendments to improve those charts. We're seeing here is a great way to report on data quickly using Copilot to do all the hard work. So your reports can be generated nice and easy and also adapted to meet your particular requirements. And Copilot, well, it can also add columns and change data. Now you might be also wanting a particular column that can have data taken from each of these different columns. As an example, I'm gonna ask Copilot to create a new column in this data that will take the invoice ID, add a hyphen, then add a description, and then a hyphen and the category and put it into a new column into our table. Now go ahead and create that for us. And as you can see, well, the result from Copilot tells us what the recommended scenario and the syntax is to use inside of Excel. But this time I can go ahead and click on insert column. Rather than writing that, it's actually added it and into all of those different rows. We can see, we can just click into any of these cells and make a change. We now have the ID, we have the description, and we have the category. That's just an example of what Copilot can do with column manipulation by creating new columns. And it can also do more. Here I'll give it a question to create a new column extracting the invoice month and go ahead and send that into Copilot. And there we go. We now have another example here where it can extract the invoice month directly from the date field. Go ahead and insert that column. And now we can work out well, when most of our invoices come up over the period of the years. Good for forecasting, right? So that's another capability that Copilot can do. But Copilot cannot also change some data. No, we also need to consider here that sometimes Copilot can't do certain things. For example, in our date column, it's showing here in a US format. What I could do is ask Copilot to make a change and change that locale in format into the UK. Let's go ahead and try that out. With that question asked to Copilot, you can see here, well, it didn't actually do the correct change. It added a short date format, but it didn't change the locale or formatting of the column. And that's because Copilot can't yet do that. But instead, I could ask Copilot how to do it. Instead, I need to do a web search. And there you go. You can see that Copilot, well, will tell me how to make certain changes. And that's the benefit. Whilst Copilot can't always do things for you, it can certainly tell you how to do things, saving you time looking around the web or buying additional books to work out how to use Excel. So Copilot, even when it can't do things, can still help you get to the end task and guide you through it. But I know what you're thinking, right? You're gonna say, Scott, well, that was all in Excel. Maybe you're in a meeting with one of your peers or one of your buses, and they want you to understand the data inside of that spreadsheet and ask you questions there and then around the project spend. Do you have time to open up Excel, the Copilot sidebar, and begin to ask all those questions and wait for the responses? My suggestion would be not. Instead, we can use Copilot chat. Whether this is in Teams or via the web on copilot.microsoft.com, you'll be able to then ask questions of your data in a conversational way. So let's go ahead and define our question. As you can see here, I've drafted my question. I'm trying to understand where the total supplier spend is highest based on all the suppliers in that data. Now we need to point Copilot to a file. So I'm gonna click on the forward slash key, head over to our files. You can see our project data for invoicing. Go ahead, left click, and then submit that into Copilot chat. It'll pick up the file within OneDrive for Business, analyze and then understand your question and return with the relevant results. And there we go, we now got the result back. It identified that GA resourcing has the highest total spend to the second. I didn't go anywhere near Excel to get that information. So I was able to pick it up and I can respond quickly to one of my colleagues or peers. But let's go further. I'd like to understand of that and have a chart because again, one of my peers or my boss said, can I see that in a more visual form? Let's go ask it for a chart without going anywhere near Excel. Now we can see here the response. Well, it couldn't give me a bar chart, but what it has done is it showed me each of the spend and the percentage for each of the supplies we use from that data. So I've also asked Copilot about what the next few months look like. 
And as you can see, Copilot was not able to help. And that's because while Copilot has no information about upcoming invoices, if it did, it could potentially answer that question for us of insights, but it cannot guess information it does not know about. So as we can see, Copilot is limited to the information we provide it with. But equally, as with these capabilities, you have access to the web. And I know that development, well, most of our project spend was going in that direction, right? So let's ask Copilot how we could also optimize our development costs to keep those down in the future. That is not included in our spreadsheet or our table of information. So here, Copilot will go out to the web to find out ways that we could optimize development costs and to apply best practice. And there we go, just as we expected, information from the company and the web. So it actually pulled information here that it found in the overall content I had access to, but also more importantly, those web results to be able to improve the way that we also work. So Copilot has changed the way we've worked for Excel data in many ways. Insights, reporting, changes to existing data, and also asking questions of it quickly when you're in a meeting and need answers fast. So Copilot can certainly change the way you work inside of Excel. And there you have it. We've now covered how to use Copilot in Excel, which may now mean that you're gonna live up to the hype on your CV or resume of being proficient in Excel. Maybe you could even call yourself an Excel pro, but if you do that, just make sure your next role well has Copilot available or else that could end badly. But joking aside, what I've shown you how to do today should hopefully help you be able to manage data better and make decisions more quickly. But of course, what I will say is Copilot is not autopilot. It's an AI tool, and AI, while well, it makes mistakes. Ensure that any data you give to Copilot and information that's returned is correct. We certainly shouldn't rely on the output of Copilot to make really important decisions, but it can help us on that journey. And considering while well, all of the Copilot tools are very much a version one, they're improving every single day, and over time, I feel they'll be even better of what I've shown you today, but there are some limitations in how we can use Copilot today in Excel. So what's next? Well, we've also got other videos on our channel covering how to use Copilot in Outlook, Word, and Microsoft Loop, and even more on the horizon. So check those out if you wanna see how you can improve how you work with Microsoft Copilot. Otherwise, if you like this video, please hit that like button don't forget to hit the subscribe to find more great content like this. And otherwise, I'll be seeing you in the next one.